Good afternoon, my friends. My name is Lama Jigme Gyatso, and this is the fifth meditation video, or I should say the fifth instructional video, comprising the set of videos known as the fourth meditation lesson. There you go, four fingers. Now, first things first. If this is your first time watching my talking head, then do yourself a favor and start off with the first video from the first lesson. Even if you've been meditating for decades, start at the beginning or you'll get lost. So I should tell you that below this video, about three inches, there's a little button labeled show more. When you click that, it'll reveal a list of links as long as your arm, including um, an index of um, meditation lessons so you can pick out the so you can pick out the first video and then the second video and then the third video and so forth. Another link that you'll find is to the class materials page of my website where you can download a free copy of the PDF entitled First Set of Lesson Texts, which contains about 24 different texts for approximately um, eight different lessons. And the reason why that's so important is all these videos are either commentaries and explanations of portions of that text, or it's guided meditations from that text. And you want to have that text open on your um, desktop so that you can follow along and really make the most of this. Hmm. Let me get my water it's out of reach. So let's dive right in. Today's lesson is found on page 131. And you know, you know, sometimes the numbering gets a little wonky. Don't worry about that. You know you're on the right page because the first line in very small print says, Essence of Mahamudra's Guru Yoga, or Union with the Teacher's Mind. Below that it reads, Gratitude Training Silence. Now that label prime brought up more questions, so I'll answer them briefly. In Tibet, there's two terms that are used a lot. One is Mahamudra, one is Dzogchen. In this context, Mahamudra refers to the technical side of Tantra, where we focus on our channels and our energy and either little drops or little um, <coughs> syllables and the like. Is my is that is moving around too much? And Mahamudra is an umbrella term to describe many different techniques. So the specific technique that we're dealing with is called Guru Yoga. Of course, that's a Sanskrit phrase, which could be translated as unifying the student's mind with the teacher's mind. That's going to make a bit more sense in a few more minutes. Let me give you a quick caveat. In every sect of every spiritual path, all the truly enthusiastic participants can be divided up into a majority of fundamentalists and a minority of liberals. So this 
this version of the technique that I'm going to teach you is very liberal, it's very concise, it's very easy. It's not the be-all, end-all, it's not traditional and fundamentalistic. It's very easy, it's very accessible. It's going to help you do many things. Number one, it's going to help you generate sensations of gratitude, which are lovely emotions. Number two, it's going to help us that gratitude to give birth to very pleasant sensations at our heart. Then we're going to just, after generating these pleasant sensations, we're going to gradually let go of them. Now that could seem counterintuitive. Usually when we work hard to feel a certain way, we hold on to it with white knuckle intensity. But that's not the Buddha way. The Buddha way is to notice and then let go. So it starts off in a generating very lovely sensations in a contrived manner. And the last part is all about spontaneously observing whatever we feel, whether it's glorious or whether it's grotesque, whatever we feel, and then letting go of it. Now, I'm not just going to say, now do it, do it now. No, no. I'm walking you through the process. I'm going to set you up for success. Now, once again, if this is your first time following along with one of my uh, meditation lesson videos, this is too advanced. Go back to the first video of the first lesson. If you've got your ducks in a row and you've already been through all the other videos, then dig in. So as you already know, sit up straight, no chair slouching, sit up straight, head over shoulders, shoulders over tush, tush at the front edge of the chair, feet flat on the ground. You might say, hey, why aren't you doing this on the ground? Well, sometimes I do it on the ground, sometimes I do it in front of the uh, computer, it's gonna mix it up. <laughs> Let's get going. So on the first exercise, and like I said, this is the silent version of the gratitude training. On the previous page, we did the verbal version. The verbal version, are we use rhetorical, well-worded, assumptive questions that are really well put together. The silent questions, as you probably already know, <laughs> where good grammar goes to die. <laughs> so. The idea is we want to ask our subconscious mind, rhetorically ask our inner mind, what are some of the things that I could feel grateful about? But that's too many syllables. We want to condense that into three syllables. So we're going to ask, thanks for what? And on the out breath, we're going to intend releasing. You know, like you're holding a pen and you're releasing your grass. Once again, these are rhetorical questions. <coughs> left hand in lap, right hand in left, palms up, thumbs do not touch each other. Thanks for what? Releasing. So now we're going to narrow it down a little bit. We're going to guide what gratitude we do possess towards our teacher. Why? Why feel gratitude to the teacher? Because apparently is the techniques he gives you work or, you, or else you wouldn't keep coming back. Thanks teacher, releasing. Now, we're again going to get to the technical stuff. Where heart, 
3, releasing. Now, in a, a future lesson, we'll get all technical and juicy and stuff. But so this is going to be a foretaste of what's coming up in a future lesson. Where heart free releasing. So we could imagine that there's a central channel that's about the width of a pencil. And it's parallel to the spine, about one thumb's width before the spine. And we can imagine that it starts four finger widths below the navel, it descends up, it arches forward and terminates between the eyebrows. We could pretend that there is a horizontal disc about the size of your thumbnail that's pierced by the, uh, the, by the central channel. Or another way of saying it is that the central channel runs through the hub of the disc. The disc is also called a wheel or a chakra. In Hindu Tantra, often the heart chakra is depicted as a spinning wheel, and it's sort of vertical to the ground. But in Buddhist Tantra, you visualize it as being horizontal to the ground. And there's different teachers will tell you to different places. I recommend searching for it with your feelings in the upper third of your chest. Now here's the trick. A newbie mistake would be to try to figure out the precise location and in the process get really rigid and uptight and stressed out. Don't do that. No, 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 no. Your body already knows where your heart chakra is. So just use your mental energy to silently and mentally ask the question, where heart free? So what we could pretend is that in the hub of the heart chakra, the heart wheel, is a little teeny tiny white syllable H-R-I about the size of a mustard seed. If that's too difficult, you could just pretend it's a little letter H. And once again, a fundamentalist approach would be to visualize it perfectly. But I'm not going to teach you the fundamentalist approach. It's a dead end. I'm going to show you the liberal approach, which is simply ask the question on the in-breath and on the out-breath Relax as you mentally intend, releasing. We're heart free, releasing. You might. Wait, wait, there's a question. Yes, me from the past, what's your question? Hey, Mr. Gyatso, Mr. Gyatso, what if I can't feel it perfectly the first time? Will the earth open up and swallow me? No, me from the past, it most certainly will not. Play with it now. And. Play with it once a day or twice a day for a week or two, but eventually you'll start feeling sensations there. The most important thing is not what you feel and it's not what you see. It's playing with the words. A nickname for the method I teach is reading meditation. So let's play with that right now. Where heart free, releasing. Now, here's a cool thing. In Sanskrit, there's something called a bija mantra. Bija means seed. So a seed mantra is a one-syllable mantra. Now, there is the idea in Buddhist Tantra of the syllables of architecture, the syllables that are already at certain chakras. At the root, it's a day. At the sex tip, it's a bay. At the secret place, it's a ha. At the, behind the navel, it's a so. Typically, at the heart, it's a whom. At the throat, it's an ah. At the crown, it's an om. However, remember the name of the set of exercises is union with the teacher's mind. 
And so in the more complex, advanced version of this exercise, we imagine that that um, one's teacher and the Buddha of compassion have united as one being, and that being has dissolved into a little teeny tiny syllable free, and that enters the top of our head, descends our central channel, comes to rest in the hub of our heart wheel. And so hri comes to be the blending of the Adam, or the Buddha of compassion, the Lama, or the teacher, and the student. Now, that's nothing to believe in. It's simply a neat idea to play with. That'll be explored in future lessons. Right now, let's just savor the idea of where heart free, this wonderful union of me, my teacher, and the Buddha I have a close relationship with, the Buddha of compassion. We're heart free. Releasing. Breathe deep. Don't be scared to breathe deep. Now we make a shift from the three syllable paradigm to the one syllable paradigm. And we reduce where heart free to just the syllable hri. And we reduce the phrase really sing to the word free. So on the in breath, free. On the out breath, free. We don't, and all you gotta do is just don't concern yourself with what you feel. Don't concern yourself with what you see. Just ment play with the idea of mentally reciting free, mentally reciting free, and harmonizing that with the mechanics of breathing. Free, free. the next exercise, we're going to shift gears. And the heading reads, The Essence of Dzogchen's um, Trikcho, or Cutting Through. And I'm going to explain that for a minute. In the, so here's the idea. There's a set of exercises the Buddha taught. In the Pali, it's known as Vipassana. In Japan, it's also known as Soto Zen. In um, the Nyingma set of Tibet, hopefully I'm not having problems with the recording. In the Nyingma set, sect of Tibet is known as Dzogchen. Essentially, it's the union of awareness and letting go. The type of awareness that focuses more on sensation it's called cutting through. And it's cutting through because basically instead of running from whatever we're feeling, we're grabbing it light of the pounds. And instead of trying to get around it, we're going straight through it. So if we were doing a more uh, a three-syllable exercise, we would ask, what feeling really seeing? But we're maintaining the momentum of just a one-syllable paradigm. So it's going to be feel free. And remember, these are rhetorical questions. So simply ask, feel, and intend free. Let's play with that right now. See, we're no longer trying to f generate a specific sensation in a specific part of our body. Now we're just noticing what sensations are there. And we'll continue. Free, I'm sorry, 
feel free. One of the myths of any fundamentalist religion is that some teachings are too special to give out right away. That's just a trick to squeeze the money out of the roots. As a liberal, we say, no, this is all basic teaching. This is all accessible. On every in-breath, we tighten up and notice, and every out-breath, we relax and let go. Even if we don't know it, that tendency is still there. All we're doing is accessing that latent, hidden tendency. Now we're going to shift to our final exercise, which is this ease. The three-syllable version of that would be noticing, relaxing. So now we're not even choosing to say, oh, I'm looking for a sensation. I'm just looking to notice anything, whatever's cart throwing, cartwheeling through my mind or my body, whether it's a feeling or a sound or a sensation or a sight, or a memory, or a hope, or a fear, or something circumstantial. Whatever's going on, we're just going to notice it. This is... Let's play with that right now. All right. My friends, you learned a lot today. We got more familiar with the Sanskrit term Mahamudra. We got more familiar with the Tibetan term Dzogchen. As crazy, wild liberals, we did miss demystified things. We talked about ways of generating the sensations of gratitude and the sensations of syllables at our heart and just general feelings and just general awareness. Believe it or not, this easy, easy sequence can harvest some profound results. And that's all you get today. I thank you for your time and your kind attention. I thank you for your enthusiasm and your support. May you and yours be healthy and happy. Before I send you packing, I wanted to let you know that um, to this video can be found on a link on the page. So if you ever lose this link, that's okay. Just turn to the right page in the PDF and you'll be able to find this video again. So turn. I want, I want to invite you before you go to hit the subscribe button and to hit the like button as well as the share button. After this video is completely over, in the upper left hand corner there should be a big YouTube button. You click that. <coughs> It'll take you to your home page on YouTube. On the left-hand side, if you scroll down, you'll come to a tab that reads um, Manage Subscriptions. Look up Lama Jigme, and there'll be a little box to the right of that name. Use your mouse to put a check mark in it. That way, the next time I upload a video, you'll get an email notification. Now remember those links I told you about below the video? You could use one of those links to help keep this monk fed. And that would be lovely, but not mandatory. There's another link you could use to register for the next series of live weekly webinars. When do they begin? Tuesday, the 2nd of July. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.